Okay, today I would like to invite you to join me for a Maha tour. Maha stands for Malaysia Agriculture, Horticulture and Agrotourism Fair. It's an expo that is held in Malaysia every year here right now in Putrajaya. As you can see around me, there are many cars in the parking lots. Okay, so this event is uh, centered around agriculture system and uh, it's a very popular event. Okay, if you intend to start an aquaponic system, one of the major costs involved is the construction of tanks. A tank of this size, if it's constructed of fiberglass, will cost in the thousands of ringgit. Another option is to have this canvas tank. This canvas tank is fairly economical. It costs about 500 ringgit. Okay, so this is a very good option if you intend to start an aquaponic system for the first time. The disadvantage is that it, it is made of plastic and it can leak and can degrade under solar radiation. Other than that, it's a, it's a fairly good option if, you, if your budget constrains you to purchase a fiberglass tank. Okay, I am now here at this exhibit. This is one of the original design of aquaponics. Uh, if you come here and see, the media used is the leka ball. Leka ball is actually expanded clay that is shaped like a like a like a sphere. And how this works is there is actually water flow into the system, and there is a pipe that flows out and it goes into three levels. And the water is stagnant at a certain level. It's hold at this level. So in other words, this is sort of like a continuous watering system. The plants is never starved of water and nutrient solution. Okay. In fact, this is the one of the earlier design of aquaponics and and sometimes this system is also called app and flow system app and flow means if they can design a system where the water goes up and when it reaches the top it siphons out up and down app and flow app and flow uh, i'm not sure whether this system has an app and flow system but but this is uh, that one thing is for sure there is always a constant water level here okay the the best medium to use in this case is this leka ball you can substitute with other mediums such as sand or perlite but those are very prone to clogging so lacquer ball can be washed easily if need be but usually we avoid washing it and at the right at the bottom of this tank is a tilapia culture if you come over here You can see that the construction is fairly easy. You can just buy a submersible pump which costs less than 100 ringgit and you just pump the water to the top and it cascades down like a waterfall. Okay? If you are looking into getting into aquaponics for the first time, this unit looks good for you to experiment and gain a hands-on experience. It is um, it is very tolerant of mistakes and it is uh, a good beginner set. Okay? Uh, and very fairly easy to construct. Now, systems like this have been entering the market recently. This is uh, always known as a uh, urban kit. It's designed for uh, people to farm in their apartments, their condominiums, who just want to have an experience of farming things. Uh, it has a lighting system and it is actually a hydroponic system. Okay, hydroponic means soilless. This particular system is by Urban Farm Tech. And uh, it is a it is a high-tech way of growing things, but a very expensive way too of growing things but if you just want to gain the experience of growing something or getting your hands into aquaponics or hydroponics this is a good system to try out now this particular exhibit tries to demonstrate the one of the traditional integrated farming which is rice fish farming you have fish on one side and the rice on the other side i would say that this is perhaps the original aquaponics of southeast asia 
Uh, it's very noisy here because there is a lot of events going on here. If you see over there. But this is the uh, original concept of aquaponics. Now the expo here is divided into different halls. Okay, we have we just came from Hall C and and opposite is just Hall B and then Hall D is over there. And the main exhibit is actually in the largest hall right over there. Now this is the layout of the exhibits here. We are right now at this area. Uh, it's called Laman Tiba One. In English, it's called Arrival Hall Number One. Okay, if you can only choose one place to go, you should come here. The the largest exhibit. This is where all the halls are, and then scattered throughout the land here are various exhibits. This is a fisheries exhibit, and then there is a rice exhibit here, and the vegetable exhibit here. Okay, so, so to uh, to go from here to here, you have to take a tram. Okay, uh, it's quite far to walk. You can, but it's quite far, and. And there's another arrival hall which is here. But this is the one that you should come to if you can only choose one place to go. This is a typical layout of prawn aquaculture. The basics of it is this. There is a there is a water inlet that pumps the water from the sea and it enters into a series of settling pond for the sediments to settle down. And then after this, the water is pumped into the various aquaculture ponds for the prawns. The green pipes represent the inlet for the water. And then after it is used, it is discharged through the red pipes. The red pipes is entering into another settling tank for treatment before it is discharged into the sea. Previously, the discharging process is not being taken seriously and this resulted in a massive virus outbreak which decimated the industry. Right now, farmers is beginning to take, take notice of the discharge waste because if you see the model, whatever is discharged will end up back into your farm. If you discharge virus and bacteria in, it will end up again in your farm. Okay? Now this is the trending urban farming system, a factory lot system for hydroponics. Okay, basically you stack it in layers and sometimes in commercial operation it can go up many many levels. And this is usually done indoors with, with artificial lighting. And the system frequently employed is the neutron film technique. Okay, where you have a reservoir tank and it's pumped up to the system and usually it circulates uh, serially. Okay, with, with enough lighting and the proper nutrients and usually it's AB, you can grow a lot of vegetables. Now, one major theme of this expo is uh, drones. Okay, you can see uh, all kinds of drones in this exhibit. This is an agriculture drone where it is used to spray pesticides on the crop. Okay, so this is uh, not your typical hobby drone. It's a, it's a serious, humongous machine, more like a mini helicopter. So it appears that this kind of drones are trending to be used in agriculture, whether for surveying or for fertilizer application or pesticide application. Now we have seen the prawn layout. Uh, basically in Malaysia, the two most commonly cultured species of prawn is the monodon and the vaname. Right here, this is monomdon. It has this stripe on its back that looks like uh, tigers. Sometimes it's called tiger prawn. In fact, the common name is called tiger prawn. It is a brackish water species which can live in the 
uh, saline water and lower into the freshwater range. So it's us it's it's considered a marine species. So so another species. Let's look at it. It's called vanambe. This is vaname. Uh, in Malay, it's called udang puteh. Uh, it, ha it does not have that stripe. And, and these two species form the main culture species of Malaysia. So when we talk about prawn culture, it's, it's almost always involves these two species. Now these are green mussels and which are usually found in freshwater or mangrove areas. Okay, so it lives in a brackish water condition. It's a filter feeder, meaning it will filter the water and intake whatever the food it needs. And usually this involves microalgae. Now this is a very, uh, a very nice looking line. And usually how it's done is this. You have one line that has a certain rope and then it's lowered into an area that is known to have a lot of these spats. The spats, which is this, you can regard it as a baby muzzle, will attach to the lines. Okay, once you, are, you ensure that the lines are full of these spats, it is transferred to a growl area where it will continue to develop into these adult muzzles. Okay, and usually in commercial operations, you have lines upon lines of these muzzles. And harvesting is the merely just lifting one of these up and harvesting it. This pump is sometimes called a wave maker. Okay, very frequently, we have to circulate the water, whether in our aquariums or in our aquaponic system. And traditionally, we have been doing it using a submersible pump, a typical pump that uh, is not here, but uh, a, a normal pump, submersible pump. But this is a fairly recent product that is solely designed to circulate water. It consumes lesser energy and is far more efficient because all the water entirely is pushed to be circulated here. It's like a fan. It's like a turbine engine that is designed to propel water. So if you wish to circulate water at high volume, this is a good option you should use this. Now this is a pretty looking marine system uh, with some seahorses hanging. Okay, one one misconception uh, of, of a marine system is people tend to think of corals like a plant. Okay? Although it is true that they do take in certain nutrients from the water, but at the end of the day, they are still a marine animal. Okay? Being a marine animal, it will discharge its own waste. Okay? So, uh, I have done a research on this topic before, whether it is possible to clean the water using corals. But at the end of the day, it is still a marine animal. It actually pollutes the water more than cleaning the water. So if your idea is to create a balanced system, you must include plants, like true seagrasses, rather than corals. Now this is the one system that you can construct easily yourself. You, all you need is a shelves and then trays. Uh, without holes and then some kind of lid that has holes in it and then a net pot and then for your nutrient solution you can go for AB solution the, 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 the go-to solution for hydroponics and then you need lights usually uh, and Usually white light works best. Okay? You can go to any, any light shop and just buy a typical lights and it will, it will grow lettuce at least. Now this system is, this is an indoor system obviously. And, and one problem with growing lettuce in Malaysia uh, is the heat problem. The moment the, 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 the plant suffers from heat stress, it will start to go into the flowering stage. And that's when it will start to grow a stalk here and then it will become bitter. Uh, this, is, this forms a nice ball here. In other words, that means it has not undergone a heat stress. So that is why in Malaysia, most lettuce operation is done on highlands, ephemeral highlands or, 
or places that are cooler in our tropical climates. Indoor farming will work for lettuce, but the problem is the cost can be very prohibitive. Do you like caviar? Not everybody likes it, but it is the it is the it is the symbol of gourmet food. Caviar is a high-end food. Okay? Caviar comes from this fish, the sturgeon fish. Now this is the belly region of the fish and usually in this region it will be filled full of fish and then when, when it's ready to be harvested, the fish will be sacrificed and the fish and the eggs removed for caviar. Okay, this is a company in Malaysia. Now usually sturgeon fish are cold water fish and it is typically not suited for our tropical climate but this company uh, is doing a pioneering work in tr attempting to grow sturgeon in our climate. Okay, uh, this is a Telo Tropical Caviar. And uh, these are some of its products, you can see. Now, whether, whether sturgeon aquaculture will, will take off in Malaysia remains to be seen. But whatever it is, this company is doing a pioneering work in trying to start a tropical sturgeon aquaculture in Malaysia. Now, vertical farming is a subject of research for many years now, at least 10 years I know of. Okay, so this is one sample of vertical farming. Okay, the problem with vertical farming is the light. Okay, if you were to put this system out in the sun, it will not work because of the self-shading effects. So this kind of system is only suitable for indoor farming where you have to install artificial lightings to supplement the plants. Okay, so the main problem with vertical farming is always the lighting issues. However you position it, there will be certain areas that will, that will be self-shading and will not receive adequate lighting. Now this is another soy-based vertical farming system. This is a barrel, barrel system where you take a typical drum a plastic drum and then you create these sorts of pockets okay basically you just cut a hole and then you use heat to form the dent here and then you plant it up uh, this is some pictures of the how this system works now again again the the constant idea of such a system, a vertical system, whether it's soy-based or hydroponic-based, is that such vertical system will produce more you if you plant it flat. Okay, uh, is that true? Um, in my own research, I found that not to be true because as you plant up, for example, the plants at this side will receive less sunlight compared to the plants at this side and at the end of the day, it will compensate for their productivity and you will find out that the flat Flat and vertical has very little differences. Let's look at more models inside. Now this is a bigger version of the of the barrel system. Okay, uh, it may work for plants that requires less sunlight, but uh, for if your plants require high sunlight, the, this part will receive sunlight and the other part will not. So, but you must select your plants correctly if you want to use this system. Okay, Mr. Ibrahim here has just explained the working principle behind it. Okay, the idea is the inventiveness of this technology is this part here. Okay. Agriculture waste and food waste can be placed in here. And then what he will do is he eventually he will introduce a black soldier fly. Now black soldier fly is a good decomposer. It will decompose the waste here and then it will convert it into a fertilizer with the hope that the fertilizer will fertilize the plants here. Okay, according to Mr. Ibrahim, this with this system you can sustain this system for two, three years without any problem. Okay? So the inventiveness of this product is not the barrel, but rather it's this part here. Okay, where you put your kitchen waste and then the black soldier fly will break it down. Okay, these are some of the awards that uh, the system has received over the years. Okay. 
this is from 2014. So this system has been in operation since 2014 and has been trialed. Yeah. While well, Bokashi is not a new idea, what is new here is the introduction of the Black Soldier Fly. Okay, in fact, this is the first time I'm hearing that uh, the incorporation of Black Soldier Fly with Bokashi. This is probably where they shine here. And, and this is a bigger version that we can have a look at. This is the this is a smaller one and this is the bigger one. It looks simple, the technology looks simple, but the science behind it, I can tell you, is rather complex. Okay, and Mr. Ibrahim has been working on this for many, many years now and, and has received many awards for this. Now, this is a variation of the neutron film technique. Now, typically with a neutron film technique, you have the problems of the roots clogging the pipes. Okay, when the root clogs the pipe, the pipe will, will overflow. That is an issue with hydroponics or aquaponics. So this is a fairly new uh, design that we have a pot and then under the pot is sort of a net pot. So the bulk of the roots are in this pot. Some roots will go through this and go into the neutron film, the pipes. This one does not have any. It's probably because it's for exhibition. Now usually you have some roots going in, drawing nutrients from this. And this is the reservoir, it's a complete recirculating system. So this solves a big problem of the neutron film technique where the pipes are frequently clogged. And this is a, another vertical system, a vertical farm system. It looks pretty and uh, it will work if you have a wall, that uh, area that is unused. But again, self-shading will be a problem if it goes high up. Now, this is another vertical system. Uh, as you can see, vertical systems are fairly popular in this expo. Again, we have a reservoir tank that pumps the water up into, into the new... This is a neutron film technique. Okay. Now, this one has a rotating mechanism going on here. Uh, in attempt to solve the self-shading problem. Now, it replicates the light on that side and it rotates to expose all the plants evenly to the lights. Okay, so this is one way that you can solve this self-shading problem. Now, the motor is over here. It's driven by a motor with a low speed gear that sort of pull the pulley system. Now, this is another variation of the vertical system, vertical aquaponic system. Now, you will be hearing about this system in the coming months and years a lot. Okay, so this is the factory plant production system where they employ a vertical system and then they use artificial light. This is done indoors. Okay, uh, it's, a, it's an urban farming where they can grow plants right in the city. Whether it will... Uh, whether it will be economically feasible remains to be seen but this is a working model and uh, various governments are furiously promoting this system um, right now it's, it's, in, it's in its early stage in fact uh, vertical farming has been urban urban vertical farming has been proposed many many years ago even more than one decade ago and today uh, one decade later we are seeing it being implemented in a fairly large scale okay so this is the this is how it would look like. Uh, this is a high-tech looking hydroponic system. For, uh, you may not know that actually hydroponics was originally developed by NASA for space exploration. The idea is to cultivate food in outer space. 
Uh, this is, is it will look something like that in the NASA compound, or probably in Mars. Now, one current trending research topic is black soldier flies. Uh, black soldier fly is an insect that produces uh, eggs and then it hatches into larvae that looks very much like uh, maggots, okay, the larvae of flies. And the application for black soldier fly is it can be used as a feed and, and the frass, which is the waste product of the larvae, can be used as a fertilizer. Now, the major constraints of black soldier fly currently is the cost whether it will replace conventional feed or conventional fertilizer remains to be seen. Here, we have an example of the black soldier fly frass. Okay, earlier on, we have seen two species of marine prawns that is widely cultivated in Malaysia. They are the, the tiger prawns and the white prawns. Scientific name is called monodon and maname. Okay, here, is the freshwater species that is also cultivated in Malaysia. The scientific term for it is Macrobrachium rosenbergi. Okay, in Malay, it's called Udang Gala. It looks like a mini lobster. The, the hallmark feature of it is it's long, the long claws in the front. So these are the three, three main species of prawns cultivated in Malaysia. And this is the freshwater version of it. Now, I have only shown you a fraction of the exhibition. Actually, the exhibition is much larger than this. Um, if you did not make it this year, try again next year. It's an annual event and it's, it's well worth your time coming here. Now, the theme for this exhibition this year is food security. Okay. Uh, uh, recently, we we're hearing in the news that uh, Food, food will be an issue in the upcoming years, whether because of uh, man-made or natural, natural issues. So the sense I get from this exhibit is there are many uh, modern farming, like such as the vertical farming, the aquaponics, the hydramics, the, the factory lot system for plants that is being promoted now. Okay, uh, these systems are considered a, a more, more modern way. Modern not necessarily means good, okay? But there are also many traditional ways that are being promoted, that ways that have been shown, proven to work year after year, okay? And then we, I can see that a lot of uh, technologies that's been introduced, such as drones and uh, remote controlled vehicles for harvesting and uh, for fertilization, okay? So, so this is the end of my tour here. I hope that I have uh, given you a small glimpse on the agriculture scene of Malaysia. Uh, I'll see you in the next video.